Okay, welcome back. So this is part two. In this uh, review slash tutorial, you won't be seeing my face, but you'll be seeing all the things I'm working on in my workspace. Um, now, after quickly reading through the SumoBot manual, it's actually on page two, it says tools required. Now, it says that all I'm going to really need is this. However, it says to use a nice wire stripper and a needle nose pliers to help you out with everything. So I'm going to go ahead and have these handy for me. I'm going to push these ahead. So let's get started. So basically the first step it says is to actually go ahead and install the battery pack. Okay, so here is the base and the battery box. SumoBot chassis, battery box. I'm going to unravel this here. I'm going to try to match this up to the... Uh, I'm going to match this up here to how they have it. So they basically have it flipped upside down on its side. And this black cable here is off to this over here. And there we go. Now it's clear how this is going to fit because basically the way it works, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's these two slits here and here, and there's two holes here and here. That's basically how these are going to go, and it looks like we can slide this back and forth as we require. Yeah, sorry about that. So we're actually just going to go ahead and jam it all the way to the back there. Now we're going to go ahead and open up the hardware kit. Let me spread some of these things out. We got a lot of things here to work with. Now, one of the things, uh, you know, one of the purposes of these tutorials and reviews is that, you know, we watch, we want you to get familiar with where robots are, and you know, many questions that we have asked on the website is, you know. You know what's the right uh, robot kit for my son or my daughter? They're this old, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, and we often you know refer them to things, and they just the main problem we find is that they don't know because they don't see them assembled or they don't know you know what's the kit, how to do it, and that's kind of the purpose of these reviews and tutorials to kind of show you you know what does it take to build these little robots and, and actually use them. You know, um, I myself come from a computer science background. And you know some things are fairly easy for me, but I know many children are not, and many people are not. You know, um, maybe you're just a hobbyist, you're an artist. Um, it could be anything, and uh, you don't necessarily have all the skills that I have, which are you know I just possess programming skills and basic electronics. But it's different for everybody. So let's continue here. So I'm just kind of going to group these together, the different sets of screws that we have. Part of me for the OCD, but it's uh, something you always got to keep track of as you're building these robots. There's so many screws and there's so many little components that you know it's best to keep things organized, keep yourself clear uh, of any confusion while you're doing it, especially when it starts getting more complicated. This is actually the fun part, which is uh, just kind of building it. You're not really, uh, you know, getting stuck or having to think much about things. So as you can see we have a lot of different components here. We have a bunch of spacers here and here. They also, these are actually standoffs. Um, they actually sell some of these at your local electronics store as well as sometimes Home Depot has them. These already have pre-tapped screws, screw holes here on either end. So they're definitely the, they're definitely going to be useful for us. A series of uh, looks like metric screws here, nuts. I think these are spacers, some longer screws here. All right, so we're set up now. What does it say here? So basically, it says to connect the two components with uh, two 440 three eighths long flathead uh, countersunk uh, machine screws, and use two of these. So let's go ahead and uh, these two countersunk. There's only two. Countersunk basically shows you that they're like you know they look like they have a little angle on them, and when they actually get screwed in, they're flush to the mounting surface. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in here. Now I can see why these have to be countersunk simply because when they're countersunk, uh, you know, you're going to be putting batteries in here. And having to put these batteries in here, you can't have blockage, you know, you can't have a screw, I mean a, a screw blocking the battery from going in and making contact. So basically what I do is I try to do everything by hand, little by little, without using any tools, just to kind of set it in place. So as you can see I'm just kind of screwing this in with my hands and holding it in place for now. 
And uh, let's see here. Here's the other one. Now this went in fairly easy. Now I can see why they say needle nose pliers are going to be needed because you actually, when you start screwing these in, you need to have, it needs to be two sided on either end. Now I'm going to grab the parallax screwdriver and just kind of tighten this up a little bit more. I'm not needing to use the uh, pliers yet because the pressure from my thumb has been uh, sufficient to hold the nut in place. So it would appear we're done with step one, which is mounting the battery box on top of the SumoBot chassis. Now I've matched up exactly to the picture. Um, basically the wire was hanging out here. This looks like the front portion of the SumoBot. So let's continue on to step two. Step two says, let's go ahead and install the servos. Servos are over here. So they actually mount on the inside. So on the under, so inside here is where they're gonna mount. Now, if you look at this chassis, there's four, four, there's basically four holes on either side of the chassis. See, two and two, and two and two. Now, that is clear to me that this is where the uh, servos are gonna go, because if you look at a servo itself, it does have four mounting spots. Two here, 